Hello and welcome to the Atomic Timekeeping Podcast, a podcast about the most accurate clocks ever built. I think that as this podcast evolves, I'm also going to talk about other things that I find interesting and as far as gadgets and electronics. And I think that if you're interested in atomic clocks like I am, you might be interested in some of these other things too. So we'll see how it evolves. But as we begin, I think there's a, a lot of things we can talk about as far as atomic clocks. For this first episode, I'd like to simply introduce myself. My name is Greg Anderson. And uh, on the net, I've been known as Elmer for quite a while. Um, long story there. But I want to tell you a little bit about why I'm interested in these atomic clocks and why I want to talk about them. Generally, I won't want to talk about myself on these podcasts, but for this one, I just want you to get to know who I am. Now, I'll tell you first of all that I went to elementary school and junior high school in the 1970s and mostly in the Chicago area. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of my age and where I'm coming from culturally. Uh, one, of the, one of the products that was big in the 1970s uh, that really didn't exist at the beginning of the decade but was extremely common by the end of the decade was um, the household calculator. Uh, in case you don't remember the 1970s, wow, we started off... You know, maybe some people had an adding machine in their house, but for the most part, you know, we just didn't have this stuff. But as uh, these products were introduced to the market, prices came down, competition heated up. Uh, soon they became very affordable, very common. A lot of companies putting out little pocket calculators or at least little desktop calculators that you could have in your home. The very first models of calculators around had... LED readouts, or in some cases, I think they called it a fluorescent display, so it was sort of a green LED readout. But uh, this digital readout with the light-up numbers uh, was something that was new and exciting that we really hadn't seen before. Something else that came out about the same time as these calculators started really flooding the market was the digital clock. Most people didn't have digital clocks in their homes before 1970. If you had an alarm clock radio, it probably had a little analog clock built into it. And uh, that was at the beginning of the 70s. By the end of the 70s, most alarm clock radios had a digital display. And just, you know, the market completely changed. And then the other thing that at the same time became such a common thing was the digital wristwatch. I remember the first time I ever saw a digital watch I hope I'm remembering this correctly, because I think it was a television program called The Magician with Bill Bixby as this magician who was also a little private investigator on the side who solved crimes and brought justice to the world. <laughs> uh, interesting idea for a show. So I think it was that show. I just remember a scene where a guy is about to make a phone call and he looks down at his watch to see what time it is. And it was a digital watch, and I'd never seen one before, but it was just the coolest thing I had ever seen. This guy, this character, was wearing a digital watch on the show. I didn't know at the time digital watches were extremely expensive. Uh, the price came down a little bit by the time I ever saw a digital watch at a store, you know, with my own eyes. I think it was like $200 for a little LED digital watch. And those of you who don't remember this... <laughs> The LED watches, um, well, the first models out, they had metal cases and uh, it just looked like a, you know, kind of a regular watch with a metal band and everything like that. But the face was just this dark, dark red blank face that remained blank most of the time. In order to see the time, you had to push a little button on the side of the watch and then the uh, the numbers lit up. Uh, for just a few seconds and you'd see the time. Wow. <laughs> but most of the time that, that face was just blank. Uh, eventually, you know, these things started to come down in price. And uh, I think uh, the real revolution was when a company called Texas Instruments started making little plastic uh, digital watches. And the prices came way down, I think, you know, maybe for about $20 now you could have a digital watch. And so they became quite common, even among my friends in junior high school, guys with digital watches. And I thought they were so cool. 
uh, even though they usually didn't display the time. You know, you had to push that button on the side. And I didn't really like the plastic watches. I thought they looked cheap. And, you know, we really hadn't seen that on the market before. Watches were always, you know, some form of a metal case, maybe a, a, a leather band, usually a metal band, but, you know, not a plastic watch. I just thought that was tacky. So I didn't like those Texas Instruments watches. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted a digital watch, and I think by the time I got one for my birthday, my parents went out and they got me a, uh, uh, it was a metal watch, but it had an LCD digital display, and I hadn't really seen this before I had one. I thought the LED was, was neater than that, but by the time I got my LCD digital watch, I realized, well, that was really the, the cool thing to have, because it displayed the time all the time. You didn't have to press a button for the digits to light up, uh, I didn't know, but apparently the LCD technology had, had made great leaps in the 1970s until finally the power consumption was not so great. And uh, by the late 70s, uh, LCD digital watches just completely overtook the market. Nobody was making LED watches anymore. The LCD was the thing. I remember my first LCD digital watch. Okay, so this was a, a National Semiconductor brand name. Uh, it was a four-digit display, so it would display the time. Now, if you push a little button on the side of the watch, it would then display the month and the date. The, you know, the four digits would display that. And if you push that button again, it would display the seconds. And then, you know, push it again, it goes back to the time. Just the coolest thing ever, right? A digital watch. And here I am in junior high in the late 70s, my digital watch. Well, because it could display the time right down to the second, I realized that I really wanted to uh, set this watch to the right time. And this became a little bit of a challenge because in my life, there were two standards for the time. 